Welcome to Edithville, our turn of the century miners' cottage in Bendigo, Victoria. Join myself, Dan, and my partner, Brandon, as we transform our little house into a home. Renovating, decorating, gardening, and creating. Building our life in rural Australia. Not to forget our miniature poodle, Sprocket. Come along with us as we document the changes and experience the journey in our beautiful home. I've taken a little bit longer to get the dog door done um, because having to wait for silicon and paint and all that kind of stuff to dry, but it is in. I have had to do a bit of adjustment to the length of the screws that go through, um, so I've shortened those, but it's nice and secure now, which is excellent. Um, and you can probably see it in action if Hey Sprocks, he's eating. <laughs> Come on. Dun dun, how good's that? Got your own door. It's bloody brilliant as far as I'm concerned. Wait, 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 Ooh. Come on. Come on. Da da. Yes, victory. So, um, it's about to rain. We're supposed to get, it doesn't look as bad now, but we're supposed to get some really heavy rains for the next two days. So I've tried to save the tomato plants. So built them a little home. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to repot, um, some other bits and pieces, um, like our tomatoes and some potatoes. And so those are going to get repotted today. Um, and then I'm going to show you some flowers that probably won't be here, um, after, um, the storm, so I'll just kind of do a quick view, and then I want you to see the poppies because these are amazing, but they really won't last because they're so delicate. So um, this might be the last time you see them. They're absolutely amazing. We've been really, really fortunate um, to have been able to witness them. You can see that coming out with the purple. They're quite a beautiful flower, but like I said, I don't think they'll survive this, considering how heavy everyone sort of said it's going to be, but I want you to see the purple iris. This always reminds me of my grandmother and her irises. She always loved them, and it's my best friend Bruce's favorite flower, and then we've got a yellow one there. It's going by a little bit, but these have just been magnificent. And I'm hoping, you know, that they do survive. But I just wanted you guys to sort of see it before. Hey, Sprocks. And then our roses are just going insane. Like, just huge bunches. But this is the first one of the season. And they just have a beautiful smell. So, I'm going to do that. I've got a few little bits starting to come out here. And there's a bee. Hi, bee. The lavender, and then I've got a few more things coming out here. And Dan's probably showed you he's throwing a whole bunch of stuff into this garden. Um, so hopefully the rain won't wash it away. But hey, my grandmother used to always say, "Put it in the ground and see what it does, and just wish it good luck." <laughs> This area right now is where I'm gonna work on next. Um, Dan and I have been talking about it and we think we're gonna actually turn it into a bit of a botanic garden. Uh, more botanical, like um, the elephant ears and the palms and all of that, because it's quite shaded. These are some of the palms. They were really, the elephant ears, they were really, really lush and beautiful when we first got here. But then we've had to constantly be filling this area up with stuff and now parking the car, they don't really get 
probably as much rain and not rain but more sun than they should because we've been blocking it with the car and a few other bits but um, then we've got these palms uh, and they came with us and they're they're kind of happy but I think that they'll be happier sort of in their own environment so um, we'll do that our nasturtium transplanted that and that's going really well uh, and our big bucket of cow poo chook poo that's kind of ma machinating and turning into something yummy for the worms. Um, but just kind of coming through this area, I think we're sort of like imagining this to be more of like a tropical grotto. And I think it's got the opportunity for that. So anyways, we'll see, watch the space. A bit of um, Val, our friend gave us some lilacs, purple lilacs. And they're just going by now. Um, but they remind me of home in Maine. Every spring you'd always smell lilac, these ones. And so like it was really a nostalgic moment. Um, Rose had them in her kitchen and then Val um, has them at her house. And so she was very lovely and came by and dropped these off. And then Dan picked me these little yellow flowers. Like I said, they're going by, but they're still beautiful. So I have started work on designing a new brick glass brick system for the end window in the studio here. Um, this window is hanging in by a thread. Um, it's fine for the moment, but what I'm going to do is actually glass brick this up. So uh, I came up with this idea after watching a YouTube video on somebody who um, was using glass bottles and glass bricks themselves are really expensive and they don't come in the right kind of colors and stuff so I've decided to use um, some glass bottles, beer bottles and some wine bottles that have flat bottoms to them and stuff so um, I just set up the cutter so this is a tile cutter that I'm using um, but it works perfectly for what I'm going to be doing and I've already cut a couple of bottles down so what will happen is they will fit together and they get taped together once they're cleaned they get taped together like so and they become the bricks for the glass bottle window and um, that will mean that we will get a nice bit of light coming through and so I have some different sizes and different colors and we've had a number of people give us some wine bottles and beer bottles so I'm just going through the process of cutting those down uh, they have to be matching pairs so um, even you know bottles like this we can use um, so I'm going to cut those all down over time and see what we end up with I'll create a frame uh, and that will also have bars that kind of go across it as well with nails sticking out and so what you do is you put some mortar down you put the bottles in and you mortar over those as well so I have to break it up into probably four sections to mortar and then let that dry and then continue on for the next one as well and uh, yeah come up with a color design once I've got everything cut and um, see how we go okay so we're gonna um, actually put together our um, Asian cabinets uh, if you look we bought these at an auction house um, it's called Valentine's Antiques actually in Bendigo and these are fabulous fabulous not sure they could be 1960s but they've got like this beautiful um, uh, detailing and these beautiful shelves they have lighting um, but we are going to put them on either side of the fireplace um, and make this more like a fabulous little like opium den sort of feel so um, we've now glued and screwed the backs uh, and put French cleating that our friend Andrew has made for us which has been awesome um, so these French cleats actually sit on the wall um, so they'll be glued and screwed to the wall um, up there and then they just rest in there and windy day today um, 
outside and a little bit rainy. But um, what we've done is, you may or may not see here, because uh, it's pretty dark, but we have hung um, one of the cabinets up and uh, we just need to do a little bit of tweaking um, to make it sit straight in relation to the wall because it's actually straight but the house isn't so we need to fix that but also uh, what we're going to do in this area here is actually paint up some detail in here because it's quite dark and highlight this frame um, and then we've got access here to be able to store some stuff which is good but I'm going to do some detail with a darker gold and then go for um, some flowers and things to make a lighter gold in here so I'll show you how that progresses today it's my task on a cold and windy day which is nice and we've got the fire lit so it's all fun for spring isn't it sprocket hmm? I don't think he cares Here we have the first coat uh, I've done a bronze gold in the back um, and I'm doing a brighter gold on the actual frame and then I'm going this is only the first coat so I'm going to go back in with the bronze gold uh, and give it uh, a little bit more coverage around the edges um, and definitely go around the border more um, so that's more solid and then uh, come in and actually paint some flowers and some different things in there what are you doing baby? Um, so I bought this print for $8, it's um, actually quite a nice print, and it was framed really well, but the frame was that, you know, like, 70s brown, and so decided to paint the frame gold, because the rest of the house is gold, so. Yes, there is a lot of gold in our house, and this is our second, second coat. Uh, of both of the brighter gold which Brandon's using for the frame and then um, the bronze gold so I'm going to wait for that to dry and then I'll do some flower paintings and I think that's come up really well we actually had a nice surprise with those prints yes so these prints here one of our friends said that they were worth quite a bit of money uh, and we bought these in Inglewood in an antique shop and uh, so we bought those and 20 bucks, for the pair. 20 bucks for the pair or is it $20 each? No, it's 20 for the pair. 20 for the pair. Uh, Brandon found a couple of copies of them because they were like limited edition prints. Not the same as those. but Not exactly the same, the same but the same artist. Yeah. And uh, they were two hundred and two hundred and fifty dollars each, so we feel like we've done pretty well out of those. And these are in much better condition, right, yeah. than the ones that you saw. So, yeah, yeah, very cool. It's looking good. I am making my costume for tomorrow for Halloween. Ah, for. The shop yes uh, and I'm going as uh, Day of the Dead uh, which I've never done so I bought these Ooh. little skeletons that you found for Hello, me skeleton. and uh, so that'll be my hat and I'll have a couple of roses on there and some decoration on that and so it's a uh, Husband and husband, because I've got trouble for making a husband and wife. <laughs> oh, really? Not really. And uh, well, there you go. There's 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 an unhappy pair. There's an unhappy pair. This yeah. is seriously unhappy. Um, yep. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. That's very cool. And just decorate that up. And then it'll be a bit. And I'm gonna try my makeup, and I'm gonna paint the mask as well for the skull. Yep. So that'll be fun. Day of the Dead. <laughs> Um, 
just with a mix of um, acrylic paint and a textile medium and I'm going to make this because we have to still wear masks I'm going to make this the um, the main part of the costume with the skull painted onto it um, and then clearly you know do my face as the remainder part of the skull um, but this all needs to go white and then put in the detail and then I can figure out the full design um, and I'll only have to do a little bit of makeup tomorrow instead of a full face. So I'm painting my mask that I'm going to be wearing tomorrow. <laughs> so this is my... That's very cool. Death mask. It's very so good. Fun. So, uh, yeah, and then I'll paint my... Well, it's good too because you don't have to paint your entire face. No, that's right. And you've got to wear a mask, so it might be a bit difficult to breathe through because I've just painted it, <laughs> but... <laughs> breathe through the bottom half. <laughs> you know, we'll see. We'll see how we go. Happy Halloween, everyone. I want you to see what's coming up in the mirror. <laughs> Happy Hi. Halloween, everyone! <laughs> I'll show you with the mask on when I am finished. We in the final look with the mask and these the black. Do it, do a tour. Oh, I need the gloves too. Awesome. Halloween <laughs> <laughs> stroll. <laughs> Do 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 do